Most people are unaware of a serious attack against Sanskrit and its sacred texts. There are powerful, well-funded and influential forces working hard to deliberately misinterpret Sanskrit Shastras like Vedas, Ramayan, Mahabharat, Dharma Shastras and many more. These scholars have become so important both internationally and in the Indian mainstream. They are undermining our Sanskriti and Dharma, sometimes with the help of our own Indian scholars, even the Indian government and some wealthy philanthropists. The media and many best-selling Indian authors rely on such scholars. Sanskrit is sacred for us. It is much more than just a language. But many famous Western scholars and their Indian chelas teach that Sanskrit is a political weapon used to exploit people. We know that Sanskrit is liberating, but these people claim it oppresses people. Their most dangerous claim is that Sanskrit has been a dead language, like Greek and Latin, for over a thousand years and has no relevance today. All these allegations are deeply flawed and mischievous. You might think this is not happening today, but I have done some serious research to spread awareness of this problem. The anti-Sanskrit scholars are well educated in Sanskrit. They are not naive or ignorant. They deliberately use leftist Marxist lenses to interpret Sanskrit texts. They use theories like feminism and Freudianism, which are completely alien to our traditional scholars and therefore our scholars cannot easily respond in international forums. They hunt for the slightest evidence in the Shastras that can be interpreted as human rights abuses. Anything that could be seen as anti-women or against Dalits or Muslims. They interpret our Shastras to attack the Vedas. Many such scholars dominate the academic publications and global conferences on Sanskrit. They occupy the most prestigious chairs on Sanskrit worldwide. According to them, the deep structures built into Sanskrit encourage enslaving people. They even accuse Sanskrit for supplying German Nazis the ideology to commit the Holocaust against the Jews. Sanskrit, they say, makes people blindly recite old knowledge and this makes Sanskrit speakers dogmatic and deficient in creativity. For example, these scholars have formulated the thesis that Ramayan promotes social oppression because it encourages a war against an enemy branded as demonic. They say Ramayan was popularized only since the 11th century specifically to demonize the Muslims and to promote the Vedic idea of the Hindu ruler as divine. They use this to attack RSS, VHP, BJP, the modern gurus and all the Hindu devatas. These scholars are not merely academic, but also involved in the middle of leftist politics on major Indian campuses. They want Sanskrit studies to be revived, but under the control of the left to diagnose what is wrong with the social messages in the Shastras. They do not like the spoken Sanskrit movement, which is making Sanskrit a popular language. They campaign to end the important role of Sanskrit in temples and agamas, as well as the vast domains of knowledge in Ayurveda, mind sciences, etc. This cabal of scholars reject that Sanskrit is the mother of most languages in South and Southeast Asia. According to their theories, Sanskrit was spread across Asia because it was useful to help Hindu kings oppress the public. The leftist goal is to demolish the paramparas and traditional ways of interpreting Sanskrit and to substitute a new Marxist parampara for researching and teaching Sanskrit. For us, Sanskrit is living, thriving, sacred, the divine source of wisdom and the foundation of our Sanskriti. Many casual Hindus are unaware of this battle, but they are being unconsciously influenced. Our people should realize that what is at stake is not just a language, but also how we understand yoga, Ayurveda, meditation, etc. The attackers want to discourage our youth from pursuing the richness of our civilization and knowledge. Academicians who are poisoning Sanskrit studies control the publication of many influential Sanskrit works. They support petitions attacking Hindu institutions and leaders, lobby in Indian politics, and influence mainstream and social media. Many Indians are funding Sanskrit studies in a way that is harmful. 
For example, Narayan Murthy, founder of Infosys, is pouring millions of dollars to translate Indian classical texts. The translations are overseen by the American Sanskrit scholar Professor Sheldon Pollock, who openly holds extreme Marxist and anti-Vedic views. Such projects are prejudicing the young minds by giving them a distorted notion of Indian civilization. The famous Shingeri Matha, started by Adi Shankaracharya, was almost hijacked by these forces recently. The Marxist Sanskrit scholars were very close to announce a deal with Shingeri that effectively transferred control of Adi Shankara's legacy internationally. Many high-profile NRI Hindus in New York's financial sector supported this move and had become appointed in prestigious posts in Manhattan. I became very unpopular because I lobbied against this and convinced the Shingeri Shankaracharya to drop this deal. Their strategy was to establish several Sanskrit chairs in American Ivy Leagues to serve as the official interpreters of Shankara, Ramanuja, Madhava and others. Each chair's appointment was to be controlled by Hindu phobics who use Marxism, feminism, subaltern studies and human rights as their lenses. One of my life's biggest joys came when I was successful in torpedoing this nasty plan. I managed this intervention by writing my book, The Battle for Sanskrit. The cover of the book frames the three main battlefronts as Is Sanskrit political or sacred? Oppressive or liberating? Dead or alive? Because our opponents have dominated the academic discourse with such clout and authority, the defenders of the tradition have often given up and run away. We want Sanskrit to continue being our foundation and to bring wisdom to all humanity. We must assemble a home team to represent our views in scholarship, teaching and public debates. The home team should be installed in various world-class training academies to compete with the institutional apparatus controlled by the opposite camp. I welcome all of you to join the home team in any capacity you can. The battle for Sanskrit is a battle for who we are. Everyone is welcome to join, but do not surrender the adhikar of who we are.